Ladies and gentlemen, let's break game into the com video. If you're interested in Intel Skylake, then I have some news for you. Well, we all know that Intel are going to be formally unveiling their processors at 5th of August, which of course will be during Gamescon. However, while we have seen some benchmarks already of the Core i7-6700K compared to the i7-4790K, uh, this is also an article by the way, and there's relevant links to that stuff in this article, which is linked naturally in the video description. Uh, another set of uh, leaks have popped out, and this set actually supposedly from Intel. Basically, what they've done is leak some of the slides you get. Now, reviewers and tech enthusiasts actually get some of these slides, and what, they, what happens is generally those slides are to kind of tell the reviewer, hey, this is what you're getting. They also send them to stores, for example, let's say, um, tech enthusiasts or so that they know how and when to market the product you know what what a product is being targeted at you know what what improvements they can use and then of course use that for their marketing on their pages but um, a set of slides have leaked out and it indicates that the new 14nm structure will add 10 to 20 percent single and multi-threaded performance over the previous generation in other words broadwell now that's actually pretty cool because when one considers that the battery life of Broadwell was 8.5 hours compared to 13, sorry, 11.3 of Skylake, you can see where this is going. Now, these slides are in the article. I'd love to put them in the video description, but leaks are uncomfortable with that, to be totally honest with you. I'm kind of excited about that desktop performance from another leak from another slide that's popped up is showing a desktop performance of around 11 percent uh, 22 percent lower tdp um other um devices for example mobiles about 20 percent improved performance graphics however is much better for example on mobile you're getting almost 50 percent improvement in the inbuilt graphics uh, this is the Generation 9 IGP. So overall, they're basically stating that it's 50% better 3D gaming performance, which is pretty impressive, to be totally honest, but not something that I particularly give a crap about, if I'm totally blunt, from the point of view of, well... PC desktop. It just doesn't bother me. Even high-end laptop devices, to be totally honest, are going to use something like a Maxwell or something along those lines so not gonna not gonna be particularly that much of a big deal but for low power devices or for the basic desk, desktop use then yeah that that's quite nice and don't get me wrong I'm not necessarily criticizing it it's it's still an advantage now it's actually quite weird and this is definitely something that I want to discuss for a second but at the moment we're in a really odd time in the in the CPU marketplace and I've had a couple of people ask me shall I buy Skylake you know is it worth saving up the pennies to be totally honest no one knows because you could regret buying Skylake in 12 months time because Zen kicks its butt or you could be super rich and not care if something better comes along or in the interim you might even regret Skylake and I'll tell you why because of DirectX 12 it actually is really weird because if you look at, say, the 5820K, just for example, you've got two extra processor cores but lower IPC, and of course, the price range, by the time you factor in the motherboard and stuff, yes, the 5820K could possibly be a little more expensive, depending on, obviously, the deals you get and the will of the gods, but even if you say it's a little more expensive, it's basically within the same price bracket because obviously DDR4 and all of that jazz, new motherboard anyway. So the the benefit you might have, however, is with Direct, DirectX 12 games, Vulkan, all of that jazz, they're going to be more multi-threaded. And with advantages of DirectX 12 supposedly bringing in uh, improved Crossfire and SLI performance, you could say to yourself, well, gee, I'm going to lose a little bit of IPC per core, but I'm gaining an extra couple of cores. And let's face it, the 6700K and the 6600K, 6600K, excuse me, for an, 
to be totally honest with you, they're pretty much like the 2500k back in the day or the 2600k. There are some IPC improvements, of course, and, you know, other bits and bobs. You know, they might have increased the clock speed, touched the cash, whatever. But generally, the layout of the cores is very much business as usual for Intel. And it's kind of a shame, and I'm sure we all agree, that Skylake is very exciting. But many of us would like to see more cores. More cores, please. You know, I, I personally had hoped that Skylake as a base, a 6700K, for example, would have something along the lines of six cores, but alas, it's not to be, which is a bit of a shame, but it is what it is. So my, my gut feeling based on this information is if you've got a really old processor, let's say you've got, and I say really old, even a 2500K now can still hold most games quite easily. But let's say you've got a 2600K and you think to yourself, well, should I upgrade? Skylake's looking pretty good. There are reports it's going to overclock over 5 gigahertz, DDR4 memories overclocking really well on it. So it's going to be a good solid platform. But is it going to be the definitive platform? I don't necessarily know about that because Intel have a lot of competing products and whether you're going to really regret buying Skylake next year when Zen comes out, unfortunately, we've got to wait for a while before Canon and KB Lake because KB Lake for example has been delayed until 2017 supposedly for the high-end desktops It's it's just a little weird is basically what I'm saying. Uh, I'm not saying that there's a bad purchase But my gut feeling is it's probably worth not being One person to pre-order. I'd probably wait unless you've got you know the money saved up and you're coming from an older system But I'm judging that by not having it in my hands yet I will most likely be upgrading myself to the 6700K, mostly because we need another system in RGT. So it's at the moment, from a personal point of view, between that and uh, 5820K. But I'm thinking I'm going to go Skylake because then I can use it as a review anyway. So it just kind of, for that point of view, makes sense since we've kind of missed out on the Broadwell slash 5820K. Uh, review train might as well jump in to the skylight review train right so for that point of view it makes sense but generally if you're a gamer and you've got a good cpu setup right now i'd consider personally if you've got an old graphics card upgrade your cpu for uh, your gpu first as normal but as i said improvements are pretty nice i love 20 percent overall for the architecture depending obviously on the application that's pretty good the average ipc of course from um, Sandy Bridge to Ivy to Haswell and all of that jazz has been roughly, depending on the generation and application and so on, roughly 5 to 10% IPC. So it's just above what we've been expecting. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.